Hello, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Again, Happy New Year. Hi, my name is Stan Asher. I'm the lead pastor of Connection Point Church of God, located here in beautiful Asheville, North Carolina, in the mountains of Western North Carolina. Today, I'd like to talk to you and let you know life is like a cup of coffee. I love a good, deep, rich, smooth cup of coffee. I remember years ago, a movie came out called Forrest Gump. And of course, Forrest Gump was played by actor Tom Hanks. And today, many quotes are still said from that movie. We often laugh. I have some friends who their last name is Forrest. Uh, some of us played some ball together and just lived life together. And uh, some today are in ministry. And we used to say, run, Forrest, run. Recently, like every state in America, we had local and state elections. Of course, we had uh, the national election also. But one of our candidates here, his last name was Forrest, and we even seen signs, run, Forrest, run. But the most famous line from that movie is Forrest Gump, played by Tom Hanks, is sitting on a park bench there, I believe, with the older lady. And he's presented with a box of chocolates and he picks one and says, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you get till you pick one. And while I love chocolate, those boxes are like a big mystery. Unless you turn the box over and read, you're not sure what you're going to get. And sometimes in my life, I've picked that piece of chocolate expecting something, but I got something different. And if you don't get what you're expecting, you get disappointed. So maybe today something a little simpler that we can relate to is life is like a cup of coffee. Well, here's a story about some alumni that once attended a university under a professor that they loved dearly. Years went by and many of these students went on to have careers, get married, have children, and try to enjoy and try to be somewhat successful in life. Well, they got together, many of those students, and wanted to go back mainly to visit and spend some time with this professor as he was getting older in life. And so they got together and agreed, and they made their travel plans and as they lived in different parts of the country. And so they gathered together later at this university to see the changes of the college campus and how it had grown and the atmosphere. But the highlight was later that evening, they all gathered in this professor's living room to share about life and to see how their friend, their professor, was doing. Quickly, the conversation went sideways. There, those alumni, those adults, began to share their disappointments and how life had been very stressful and there was much anxiety and their life had been filled with a lot of failures. After a few moments, the professor asked, would anybody like a cup of fresh brewed coffee? Every alumni said, yes, professor, we'd love some of your famous coffee. And so the professor arouses himself from the couch and he moves to the, uh, to the kitchen and there he brews some fresh hot coffee. After a little while, the professor returns back to the living room where those alumni are still talking about life's disappointments, failures, anxiety, stresses. And there, along with the two piping hot pots of coffee, the professor brings a large tray of a variety of coffee cups and sets them on the coffee table. After a minute, the professor asks all the alumni, he says, if you'll pick your coffee cup from the coffee tray on the coffee table, then I'll go around the room and I'll pour you a fresh hot cup of coffee. Well, it looked like a bunch of kids running to the cookie jar or the cookie bowl or running to the store with the gift card. And they all gathered quickly and they grabbed the coffee cup and they went back to their seat and there the professor goes around the room and pours a cup of coffee. It's dark, rich. The aroma fills the room and everybody's anticipating enjoying their cup of coffee. Well, as they begin to enjoy their cup of coffee, of course, the conversation quieted down. And then the professor said, I'd like to tell you and show you why many of you have lived a life 
of disappointment with anxiety and stresses. The professor goes on to say, let's all focus our eyes on what's left on the table. And there on the table was only plain, cheap, easy to find coffee cups. He said, now look around the room. And around the room, all the students, the alumni, out of the variety of coffee cups on the coffee tray on the coffee table, they had only picked the most appealing, the most pricey, the most expensive coffee cups that this professor had collected from gifts from students uh, from his travels abroad. Not a single alumni picked any of the plain coffee cups. And there the professor taught his object lesson. He said, one of the reasons you've lived a life of disappointments, he said, you reach for things by how they look, never considering what was on the inside. He said, is anybody enjoying their cup of coffee? They all said, yes, professor, your coffee is still is so good. He said, the coffee cup you chose did not change the quality of what's inside the cup. He said, it didn't change the life of what's inside the cup or the flavor. He said, but rather you chose your coffee cup based on what was appealing to you, what looked good. And then you looked around the room and compared what you had to everybody else's. And the professor there taught the object lesson that it's what's on the inside that matters. I've learned in my own life that if I don't get what I expect, I'm often disappointed. How many of us today have chosen things in life based on how they look, what we heard about them, and we were sorely disappointed? Did you know the Bible says that our body, this body, is a vessel? All our vessels look different. They come in different shapes, sizes, colors, varieties. They come from different backgrounds. But all vessels, all humans carry something on the inside that is of utmost value. It's the soul, and the soul is going to live forever. We often in life reach for what looks good. We go for what looks expensive, and we try to dress up the outside. And in itself, there's nothing wrong with that. But we often forget what's on the inside that's what's important. Now at the house, I do have my favorite coffee cups. And everybody that comes to the house knows that those are my favorite coffee cups. But all in all, it really doesn't matter as long as it holds coffee and it protects you from you spilling it on yourself and it holds it. One of the greatest accounts in the Bible about this very situation is found in the Old Testament. Israel's first king was chosen strictly on how he looked. He was valued on how he looked, and that was King Saul. The Bible says he was head and shoulders taller than everybody else, that he looked smart, he was handsome, he had the right hair, he carried himself in a way that everybody was attractive to. But sadly and tragically, King Saul was an utter failure because no one considered what was on the inside and sadly, what was on the inside of Saul was rotten. He was very prideful. He was very arrogant. He had an unteachable spirit. Nobody was going to tell him what to do. And that was all dressed up in a package that looked good. Well, so Israel's looking for another king and the prophet of the day, their job and responsibility, like pastors today, their responsibility is to hear from God through studying his word and praying. I hope that pastors are doing that today. Sadly, some are not, but I'm thankful for the ones that do. So Samuel, the prophet of Israel, is led by the Lord to go to Jesse's house. Jesse had many sons, and Jesse had heard that the prophet was coming. And so a great feast was prepared. And so Samuel asked for the sons of Jesse to be brought through so Samuel could look upon them, pray, and say, Lord, is this the one? Jesse's first son appears there in front of Samuel, and he looks a lot like Saul. He's tall. He's strong. He's got muscles. He looks the part. But God told Samuel, this is not the one. All of Samuel's sons, or all of Jesse's sons, passed by Samuel, 
and not one did God say, this is the one. And so Samuel looks at Jesse and say, do you have any more sons? And Jesse says, well, there's one. We didn't even bother to invite him. You see, he looks different. He's uh, fair skinned, ruddy, not the best looking guy in the world. In fact, he tends sheep, a nasty, smelly job. You really don't want to see him, do you? And Samuel says, yes, go get David. And so they waited and they got David out of the sheepfold where he's tending sheep and he comes in, he smells, he looks different. He hasn't had a bath. His hair's all frizzy and out of control from sleeping on the ground. But there that day, God spoke to Samuel and said, this is the one I want to be king. And there out of that text, we find a powerful scripture where God reveals to us and says that I or God looks upon the heart, not upon what we see on the outside. I want to encourage you today as you live your life, we need to always consider what's on the inside. What's on the inside of others that look different than we do? What's on the inside of that thing that we're getting ready to choose or pick? I want to encourage you today. Many of us have lived disappointments. We've endured failures. We've had stresses and anxieties because what we chose wasn't what we thought. So today, I encourage you, think about your vessel. Think about what's on the inside. That's what's important. Quit comparing yourself to everybody else. God loves you today. And today, if you've lived such a life of failures and you've chosen the route of sin and you're doing things you shouldn't, there's hope today. It's found at the foot of the cross. I'm sitting here in our children's church. We have a wonderful children's program here at Connection Point. Emily Dyer leads it. She does a fabulous job. And right in the center of the room is a cross. And that's where you find hope today. I want to tell you, no matter what your cup looks like, it may be cracked. It may be wore out. It may be just plain. That doesn't matter. It's what's on the inside. The Bible tells us to be content with such things we have. The Bible also tells us when we're going to reach for that coffee cup, prefer the other let the other person choose first. I love you. I'm praying for you. I'd love to hear from you. Even more, I'd love to see you here at the Connection Point Church of God sometime in person or online. Have a wonderful day and thanks for 13 minutes of your time. I know it's valuable. I'm praying for you. Send me your prayer request, question, or comment. I'd love to hear from you. God bless.